Hello everyone. As we are now into October, this is the first of a new set today. Um, and I will be painting a simple landscape, which will include some of the techniques that we used last month and demonstrating the use of the pen at the end of the painting. Um, I'm going to paint this, which is a Shropshire scene sent to me by my good friend Kate. Thank you, Kate. But it involves quite a few of the things that we've done before. I'm going to paint in a fairly um, simple sky and a light sky because I, there are hills and um, meadow and so on behind that I want to put some in. Um, then we have a lovely meadow and we have woodwork here which um, will set the scene and give a nice lead into to the paper painting painting and I want to actually um, create a sense of distance if I can so there are a few things to think about um, and of course using the pen at the end as I said which we could use on on the fence and the brambles and maybe the tree and some of the grasses but I wouldn't put any pen on the distant area because it's just going to bring it too far forward. So this is something I want you to to show you and for you to have a go at. Okay, I've these are the colours that I've used and I'm trying to keep a fairly limited palette as well. Um, I've masked off a few grasses just at the bottom here and so when I put the deeper colours in, the grasses there, the light grasses, should show up quite nicely. Right. I've taped, um, put a pop, popped piece of tape across, all the way across the, the, the paper, to um, so that I can keep a nice level horizon. And to remind you and me that this tape mustn't be central because if it is we completely cut our picture off halfway through um, halfway down the page and that just absolutely doesn't look good so that stays on until the sky is dry I'm having difficulty speaking today I'm afraid because I've had a I've had a procedure on my mouth and it's hurting <laughs> So maybe I won't talk quite as much. That may be a good thing. But it's not only affecting the speech, it's affecting the brain as well. So bear with me. Right, so I've made sure that I've wetted the whole area. And if you can't quite see if you've been everywhere, anywhere, everywhere, just tip, tip the pad and then you can see the little dry patches that you might have left. And I've already got um, a nice pool ready of ultramarine blue and I'm using my filbert brush which has got a nice rounded end but I'm not going to worry about any clouds or anything like that today because I want to show the hills up but as always and it's not showing up particularly on the photo but um, the sky at the top of the page is the area above your head which in fact would be deeper in colour which helps to give a sense of distance okay so I can actually put a little bit more depth at the top there as, as I work down because then I can put the hills at the bottom where I'm keeping it lighter. So touch as little as possible, but you have about three minutes to get a little bit of variation in your sky before it starts to dry. But the minute it does start to dry, it's going to be a good idea to stop. 
because if you get dry patches of paint, it really doesn't look good. So what I'm going to do is tip backwards and stop until this is dry and try not to dry it with a hairdryer, okay? So be patient with your skies. It's not completely dry at the top, but it's, it's drier towards the bottom here, so I think I'm okay to think about popping in the hills. There is actually a little bit of a grassy meadow at this point here. So I'm actually going to just pop that in first, very lightly and not showing up too much of the greenery. But it's very pale, very distant. And just enough to help to tell the story without getting too involved. There are lots of hills here, but I'm not sure that I'm going to put them all in. I'm just going to indicate what I can see in the picture, um, getting the impression of what I see in the picture. There is a house behind the tree here, but I felt that was a step too far because all I can really see of it is the window and it's just going to get too busy and I wanted to keep this really quite simple. So, nice little hill here. So don't touch too much, bring that down nice and quickly. Trying not to touch that green area there because that's still wet. And that area is going to be behind the tree. I'm going to stop and just dry those off before putting one more little hill in. It's quite misty at the back there, but I'm not worrying about too much about creating the mist. But if you did want to get involved with putting mist in, one good tip for that might be to pop a little bit of white gouache with your paint to create a softer misty looking effect. Right, so those hills are looking all right. Um, some of which are now going to get covered. Move this out of the way for the minute, I think. Right, so I've got some distant trees just showing up through here. Very wet brush to just indicate a little bit of a an area of trees here. And then any minute now I'm going to take off the tape. It's so distant you really can only just see a little patch of, of colour here. But it, keeping it light will just help to give it a little sense of distance. Right, let's get this tape off. So try to use a tape that isn't too strong because sometimes it can actually tear the paper. It helps if you can just take a little bit of the sticky away as well before you pop it on, I always think. 
There we go, that's all right. It's pulling it away from the painted area. Now I've got another bank of more prominent trees to pop in here. So I've got some burnt sienna and a little bit of the ultramarine in it to darken it and make it less bright as well. So I've got a selection of brushes out because I wasn't sure what I was going to use, but I think I'll try with this little foliage brush here, just to pop a few trees in on that horizon line here. And then I'll have to work on the meadow. So not too too prominent, not too deep in colour because it's actually just going to serve to bring them forward which is what we don't want. They're very, very distant. So while that's drying, I've got another bank of um, trees here but them further forward and so I won't be putting those in until I've popped the grasses in the meadow. Right, okay. It's getting a little bit warmer in colour just here. So making those go back by putting a few of those deeper colours in the front. Right, so, flat brush I think. Maybe a wider one. I don't want to make very much of the meadow. It's a very, very pale colour to start with. And then I could put some deeper colour perhaps over the top. Lovely grassy meadow. Leaving white patches showing. I'm getting a little bit brighter with the green towards the foreground here. I won't mind too much if I go over the fence because the fence is going to be deeper and stronger in colour. I just want to set the scene here with the, with the meadow. Not much drawing. I did draw the fence, as you can see, but not much else. So this is similar to the way we paint water in some ways. A bit deeper in colour over this side. So a nice flat brush will do the trick and create some texture over the top of the wetted area. We can always touch it up a bit more later if necessary, but there are sort of stronger clumps of grass. And this is what that's trying to show. So, a bit more greenery through here. I'm going to have to pop in a nice dark, dark fence 
to cover up the green. I wouldn't mask it off because I just think it's going to get a little bit too contrived. And it's not necessary if you're painting it darker anyway. There's a lot of meadow to think about here. But some of it's going to be covered with trees and other bits and pieces. So a few more colours and tones into this meadow, otherwise it's going to look very, very bleak and bare. Coming further forward, you're going to see a little bit more of the texture in the in the, in the meadow. So pop a little bit more work into that. And that's a, a good thing to do while it's still damp because it's softening the edges. Okay, I think that's enough. You can always pop a bit more later if necessary. I like what's happening here. That looks natural. So allow things to happen and don't judge until it's dry. Right, a few more distant trees here. Put a bit more blue into my... A little bit drier brush now. These are coming a little bit further forward and disappearing out of the edge of the page. A little tiny bit more work into these trees, I think. A little bit of depth, I think, needed here and there. Just to add some variety to these trees. That's better. And certainly some depth into the bottom of these, but leaving some gaps because I can see through. Right, good. But what I do need to do is to put some Tree trunks in just because they're not all going to be at the same level, and this is going to actually help to make it look a little bit more natural. You can just see some little tree trunks in the distance there. So this is a sword brush. So let's see what happens there when it's dry. A little bank of trees in the distance. Now here we have some real depth between these trees. So while that's still damp, I'm going to let that drop in. It's neutral tint I'm using here, which I didn't say I was going to use, but it just happened to be handy. 
any dark, dark colour would do. You could even put a little bit of the blue in there. So that's looking a little bit further forward now, which is a good thing. Right, I'm going to just drop a little bit of water on the top of those trees just to mingle them a bit and let's see what happen, happens when it's dry. So I think I've taken care of that area now, which is good. And it's looking quite distant. But what I've got to deal with now is a tree at the side, which in fact is very dark in colour. So I've got some sepia out. Put a little of the ultramarine in it because it's always going to help to keep a limited palette and it'll gray, make it slightly greyer. Yeah, good colour. Just splodged. Okay, so a bit of a tree trunk coming up and through the page. So take your time over trees. I doubt I'll get all this done, but you'll get the message. It's just coming in at the side of the picture. So branches. Just a pointed brush. Got lots of little branches and things to put in which are deeper in colour before I get to the, the little leaves and things. Dropping some water back in will give it some texture and make it look less flat. Yeah, I'm much happier with this brush. So it's got to have lots of little texture marks in there now to create leaf and more branches and things. Tiny ones. So vary the colors. And what I can do is pop a little bit more of the, a few more of the branches through afterwards if necessary. It gets quite dense in places, but I'm trying to show the light through at the same time. So this foliage brush really is good, it's to doing a lot of the work for me, making sure I don't keep it too wet. It's quite dense there. So that's that little tree popping through. So then thread a few more little branches through, coming and going. And you can put quite a lot of work in, in this way. And it is a good idea to take time over it because 
you could really spoil the whole look of the thing if this tree didn't look natural. So my advice there is to do some, let it dry, and then come back to it if you feel it needs a little bit more of anything. But it is just more or less one colour but different tones. I'm deciding to leave certain things out as I go along. There is a warm little bush here and I wasn't going to put it in but I've decided now that I will because it's going to add a little bit of colour and life to this corner and it can go straight out the back of the page. I like the way that's drying up. The dropping in of the water really helps. So don't forget that little technique. Right, I'm going to drop some water back here as well. Take it further back, give it some distance. But it's actually given a nice balance to the other side of the picture. So next, I think I will work on the fence. So again, I'm going to use this collection of browns, darks and lights. It's quite a light looking fence, but I'm going to give it a little bit more strength, but bearing in mind at the same time that I'm going to put some pen on it, so I don't have to do a huge amount of work. And I did put, at the beginning, a little bit of candle wax on so hopefully that's going to bring some light in so starting up one end and working across using the brush flat and on its edge, depending on what you feel it needs and what's going to work. We need that sepia back to pop some darks in while it's still wet. That's the timer gone on the floor. That's better. It isn't level, it's crooked. So make sure you see things like that because that's what gives the picture character. <laughs> Useless. Some of this where these little fence posts are going off behind here. And they're very raggedy, so very worn looking. So make sure you try to show that. And they're not all going to be the same thickness. I think that this is what attracted me such a lot to this 
particular photo that Kate sent. I love the fence. <laughs> So I know at least one of you've got this photo to, to use, but I'm sure you'll all be able to find something. And I would suggest that those of you who've just come back from Corfu maybe would like to paint something from there, from your photographs that you took there. Right, I think I'm going to have to stop and do a bit more of this fence because it's going to take an awfully long time, I think, to get it right. So I'll stop and come okay, back. Okay, so the fence seems to be in. Um, I'll put some pen on it at the end. Um, but now I need to just pop in some of these little brambles that are sitting at the edge here. So lots of little funny marks going on in there. So using a little scrubby brush again to save time and get it going a little bit. There's also some masking there. Some really dark marks in the corner to keep the eye in the page. Which will also show well over the top of the fence. So nice balance going on again. This is a good photo, Kate. Maybe just a little bit more warmth in. And then I'm going to get the pen on there in a minute. So I just want to wash a little bit of greenery over here before putting the grasses in, keeping it nice and bright and yellow towards the foreground here. A lot of this will be covered. It may not even be in the picture because of the mount, I'm not sure. Bring that yellow through. So it's a little washy, light landscape that we can put the pen on to bring up any of the stronger areas that we need to show up. That needs to dry. some grasses in. So sword brush. So vary the, the tones of the green here. It will work in different directions. Get lots of lovely grass growing up around these fence posts. Burnt sienna is such a good colour and one to use, I think, a lot within your landscapes. The farmer ran out of fence post when he got to this bit. Well, in my picture, anyway. 
anything you can do to break up the monotony of a picture, you know, do. So I could have taken more time over that, but I think it's going to dry up okay. And I've yet to take the masking off, so. Right, so I'm going to dry that off and then do a little work with the pen. There's a lot of pens in my hand, so I probably use a variety of them. But I'm just using a black pen on the fence. You could use dark brown or grey, but I thought I'd make it nice and strong. And again, holding it loosely and not putting a hard line around it, but just scribbling away, making some sort of marks that you might see in a wooden fence. And now's a chance to sort of create interesting areas into the fence. For instance, a little sort of shabby top. This is a good technique to use um, either in your planning if you want to paint a landscape or anything and then pop the pen on afterwards. But it's also a very, very useful um, technique in the event of having painted a picture that you may feel is a little weak to go back in on the top afterwards with the pen can make a huge difference. So bear that in mind. This is the fun bit, isn't it? very dark area in that fence which I've kind of copied. And of course you don't have to go everywhere but just bring up any areas that you feel could take the strength of the pen. Or need to be brought up in a stronger way. All right, I've got that little brush pen here. I don't know how that's going to work in these brambles. Perhaps that might make a good effect here. Because the brambles are all sort of mingled together and spotty and obviously lots of thorns and things going on so creating a nice dark corner here so i could do a bit more of that but i'll leave it for the moment. Nice brown pen in here too would help if you've got a nice warm brown. Also that brush pen might be nice to bring up some of the stronger areas in the tree just to vary the tones a little bit. That's given it a little bit of strength just down that side. 
It's not actually a water soluble pen, but if you're quick, sometimes it doesn't, before it's dried up, you can actually just wash a little bit of water on top to make it blend slightly. But anyway, that's all right. Um, I think I'm just about there. Might use this pen just to create a few more little dark spaces here because they are very dark. In between the lights, don't take your light areas away. Right. I think that's okay now. I think that's done. I'm just going to take the masking off. A little bit of work into this tree trunk. Right, I'll just stop while I take the masking off. Here we are, taking the masking off and the tape from around the edges. And I found a little optional extra in my photo. Um, it, it has some barbed wire twisting around. In fact, it goes all the way across, but I thought that was a step too far. Um, but just put a little bit around the edge there, around that end post, and uh, as if it's broken and not in use anymore. So things like that can always add a little bit more interest to the picture. Um, so here we are. I don't know whether I think that's it. That goes all right. So there's the finished picture. So I hope you'll find something that you would like to paint. And I look forward to seeing what you do. Um, it's nice to be back and I look forward to seeing your work, obviously. Perhaps those who came to Corfu, as I said before, would like to paint um, something from one of your photos from there, or if in fact you've been anywhere else for a, a break. Um, I've not decided as yet what I will be demonstrating next week, but um, I'll be back and we'll carry on. Um, maybe painting some more skies or painting loosely I'm not quite sure yet but um, something anyway um, but do remember that you can create a little watercolor here's another one that I did earlier um, it's got very little pen on it um, tried not to put too much in the water in the hills and things like that um, but it definitely helps with the foreground so remember that, or if in fact you end up with a with a weaker picture that you need to give a bit more strength to. So happy painting everyone. Take care. Bye bye.